I could come with you, John. I've always depended on you, my brother, and I would feel so much better if we were all together. This is the best way, Stephen. Once I found a job, we will send for all of you. Uncle Timmy has room for only one family, and barely enough money to take care of himself. Where will you meet Uncle Timmy? We plan to meet him at Ellis Island. Hopefully, all will go well. Please be careful of police and officials. I heard they can give you trouble unless you pay them off. Stephen, we are going to America. Isn't it like the old country? We will be all right. Uncle Timmy will help us. He's been there for 10 years. I'm sure he'll know what to do. The ship's bell's ringing. You better get ready to board. Mother, where is Peter? He was right behind me. Peter? Peter, where is that boy? I know he'll be the death of me yet. He's only a little boy, Sonia. I don't think he really understands. When I get a hold of him, he'll understand. Peter! Peter, where is that boy? I'm here, Mother. Did you see the size of them ships? Every one of them is bigger than our entire village. I can't wait. That's yeah. right here, young man. You better pay attention and stay right here by my side. Well, we must be on our way. Goodbye, dear brother. Don't worry. We'll be together soon. Wait, it's time to the other package of meat and cheese for you. Food on the ship will never be like home. Thank you, Catherine. <coughs> we'll miss you very, very much. Mother. ocean will separate us. We can use our letters to share what is in our hearts. Goodbye, dear cousin. Until we see each other again in, in, in America. This is the first time Maria has ever been away from our village. How will she ever be happy in this place called America? Why did they have to go? much longer. It's only a matter of hours and we should be sighting land. I'm sure all the steerage passengers are disgusted with the overcrowding and the terrible treatment. When I booked passage on this ship, the agent said it was so comfortable that I would sleep like a log. I think he meant I'd be sleeping on a log. I can't wait to sleep in a nice soft bed. The first thing that I'm looking forward to when I get to America is a delicious hot meal. My pigs ate better food than what they serve on this ship. Speaking of pigs, when I get to America, I'm gonna take a hot bath. The way things smell around here wouldn't be a bad idea if the rest of you did the same. Well, I'll come clean, but not until I make a bundle of money. Then I could live like a king. <laughs>
Grass may be green in America, but we sure won't be seeing too much grass in New York City. Nope, because Bill needs more buildings, what I've heard. How tall are the buildings in America? Well, some are as tall as mountains around our old village. Oh, I can't wait. Now I can get lost in the buildings instead of getting lost in the mountains. I'll have no more of that, young man. You better learn to do what you're told. It's very hot and miserable down below. Since the sea is calm, let's sleep on deck tonight. That's a good idea, Don. We can all curl up into this corner. Almost everyone has fallen asleep. As you know, we were looking forward to our sea voyage, but it has turned out, unfortunately, to be a great disappointment. The crew members treat us like cattle, and except for a few kind first class passengers who throw us candy and fruit, the steerage passengers are looked upon as nothing more than baggage. Tonight was the first time that all the steerage passengers showed a great deal of joy and excitement. Everyone knows that we are only a few hours away from New York City. And soon, you'll see the Lady of Liberty, the grand statue that marks the entrance to the harbor. In the morning, we will be processed on Ellis Island. We pray that all will go well. It will either be a day of great joy, or, if we are rejected, a day of great sorrow. My eyes are very tired now, so I must bring this letter to a close. Please give our love to your mother and father, your loving cousin, Maria.
Have you written to Maria yet? I'm very anxious to find out if they're all well. I know, Mother. I've been thinking about them, too. I plan to write a letter. It's late, and I think I'll be going up to bed. Be sure to tell them that our prayers are with them. I will, Mother. Sleep well. I'll be up in a few moments. anxiously awaiting news from you and your family. Our prayers are with all of you and hope that everything is going as planned. As you might expect, very little has changed in our village. Many are without food and the authorities continue to make life very difficult. We are more than fortunate that Father has been able to find some work. His job takes him away from home a great deal and Mother has been having difficulty in caring for the animals. Aside from this, we are well and hope that you will soon be settled in America. Please write to me as soon as you can. Your loving cousin, Catherine.
have, John. Good things take time. And speaking of good things, I've been putting away a little of money, and in a couple of weeks, we can all go to the market on Mulberry Street. Oh, Uncle Timmy, I hope those two weeks go quickly. I can almost see all those wonderful things. And I can almost taste all those wonderful things. All right, children, it's time for bed now. You'll see, the two weeks will pass before you know it. special day. I have enough money that each of you can buy anything you want. We can even buy a surprise present for your father. If John can only find a job, that would be the best present of all. I hope he will have good news for us today. I've never seen so many beautiful things. It looks like these things came from all over the world. Of course, Peter. Even the people you see here come from all over the world.
all this waiting, they'll finally be coming to America. It's funny, but I had the strangest feeling that somehow Catherine is thinking about us now. It's almost as though she was here with us at this very moment. It won't be long before you'll really be here with us. Then we can have the greatest celebration of all. any minute now. 
I think I see them. I think I see them. You're right, Peter. It is them. Stefan, Nina, Catherine. Welcome to America. Welcome to your new home. Hello, Uncle Timmy. We are very happy to be here, but it'll be some time before we can call this place our home. Everything here is so strange and new. In our village, everyone dressed and acted alike. But people in America are so different from our homeland. Yes, I know what you mean. That's the way I felt when I first came. But now America is my home. It's the land of many faces, but we all share a common dream, to live in a land of freedom and opportunity. If you don't stand up for something wrong, that's for you. You remember I told you that it's not me, it's you? That's for you. gentlemen, I'd like to tell you and show you some of the people behind the scenes that you don't see 
and those people are very important to a show like this. It's what we call our technical crew. Backstage, we have Russ Rilling, Melanie Batters, Kenny Jackson on curtain, Rick Kaya backstage with Dale Kanak. Also on technical crew, Robin Straley running sound, Ken Lilly, Terry Stafford, and our trooper Matt Glaser, even though he has a broken leg, on lighting. Thank you. And the music's going to stop before uh, we get through all these people. That's how many people are involved in this. One at a time, I want to call them out. And if you will hold your applause to the very end, you can do it again, OK? According to your program, Jason Salyer, John Anton, Lance Ketron, Peter, Randy Lawson, Joseph, Don Fryman, Sonia, Emily Engel, Catherine, Alicia Zachary, Maria, Craig Eaton, Stefan, his wife Angie Graham, who played the part of Nina. And then we have six passengers who had lines upon the ship on the way over to America. The first one was Nikki Isaacs, followed by Christy Bishop, Heather Northrup, David Kinney, David Mikesell, Doug James, Ben Williams was our officer at Ellis Island, and the two gentlemen whose name would barely fit in any telephone directory, Tim Massey, Roberto Belenchenko, Todd Northrup, Johannes Schmidengeister, Jason Gunkel was our ferry boat hand, Tim Agnew was the crewman who wanted to make sure that they took their cockroaches with them. <laughs> Kim Prater was the old woman who wanted to make sure that uh, they got to stay in the new country and she was reminding them not to sneeze and cough and make them think they were sick. It is true that if you got to Ellis Island and they thought you were sick, you may be sent all the way back to the old country. And this is one of the things we found out in this show, that it was tough to get in. Going on. Where am I? Oh, Richard Pierce was Uncle Timmy, and a very fine one he was. Rachel Wright was the gypsy, with a beautiful voice. Carrie Whitaker, our Chinese girl, who found out that 10-hour days uh, <coughs> were hopefully uh, taken care of by the unions later on. She wasn't a part of that, though. Carrie Whitaker, the Chinese girl. Kim Akers, German musician number one, and Emily Hanselman, number two. They read music better than they told you they do, by the way. Joy Barrett had the opening solo along with uh, Jason Salyer at the very beginning of the show. Now, there were four other people who had solos in the song America's Our Home that you heard at the very end. That again was Jason Salyer, Shannon Hodges, where are you, Shannon? Becky Gardner, also a solo at the end. And Tamika, which by the way is spelled wrong in your program, it has an E on the end here, it should be with an A, am I right? She's not here. That instead was pl uh, sung at the last minute. And by the way, this is the guy I was talking to you about that said, we can do this. I can do this. Two months ago, he wouldn't sing. It's like, yeah, good, get me to sing, man. And by the way, he had to leave. So we'll applaud him anyway, but we'll do that at the end. Um, Carrie Sheldon, these were speaking parts at the end. Carrie Sheldon, Deanna Duff, Britton Stockstill, coming around the corner, and Karen Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, the people that you saw down front here are the extras, the people who, without them and without their characters, this show would not be as you saw it tonight. Everyone auditioned for parts that they have tonight. Some made it, some didn't. But I think you noticed that there were a lot of parts to go around. But when you got 92 people, everyone can't be the soloist or can't be the leading role. But I think they've learned a lot from this. And I hope that they have a deeper feeling of patriotism for this country than they had before we started. I know I have a lot of respect for them, and tonight, when we were sitting here, I know the teachers and I that <laughs> have watched these kids go through this, today began to have our hearts in our throats because we had a mic that, that failed. We had some people that were almost in tears because things didn't go right, including me. And tonight, this was almost flawless, folks. What you saw was a super, super performance by them not by me, not by the teachers. 
I told him we started, I said, 90% of this will be me when we start and 10% will be you. When we get to the end, it'll be just reverse. I'll take 10% of the credit and you get 90%. I would like to show, have you show them that appreciation one more time, would you? I think he's done a really good job. And to show our appreciation, um, we're giving him some flowers and a lighting board to help him in our, his next coming up play, the program. <laughs> and sing along with a musical 42nd Street, now in color. <laughs> <laughs> 